Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You know what? I believe the devil tries to keep us focused on things we cannot do anything about. Come on, I get this. He tries to keep us focused on things we cannot do anything about so we don't focus on the things that we could do something about. You see, I can't make another person want to love God, and I can't make another person want to change. Now, I can pray about that, and God can work in them because it's really got to be an inside job. But what I can do something about is I can receive conviction from God about my own life and I can cooperate with the Holy Spirit to let him change me. But the enemy wants us not to even see our own deal and be so busy finding fault with everybody else. Oh God, grant me the gift of awareness. The right kind of awareness. In Matthew 12, 14 and 15, The Pharisees were holding a consultation against Jesus. The Pharisees went out and held a consultation against him how they might do away with him. <laughs> But being what? Aware. What? Aware. But being aware of this, I love it. Jesus went away from there and many people joined and accomp accompanied him and he cured them all. You know, we need to be more aware of the motives and the attitudes of the people around us. Boy, we could save ourselves a whole lot of trouble if we weren't so off up in the clouds. I mean, not everybody that comes around you is a good person for you to be around. Some of you, your life could change dramatically if you would just switch up some friends. Amen? Amen? You sure you believe me? I don't know. Can I tell you something? If every time you have coffee with Mary Jane, she's gossiping about everybody else that you know, wake up and smell the roses, she is gossiping to them about you. you know, we're just best friends and we share things with each other only. Hogwash. <laughs> Be more aware of the fruit that's on people's lives. You'll know them by their fruit. Be a good fruit inspector. If there's no fruit, get yourself some new buddies. <laughs> You know, if you're a little more aware of what's going on around you, and boy, I've learned how to do this, and it has saved me, oh my gosh, so much trouble. You know, my husband and I, we almost never have an argument now. And Lord, we lived in the war zone the first, I don't know how many years we were married. <laughs> Mainly because I didn't know when to shut up. No way, no how was I going to shut up. I was going to be right and have the last word. Well, I finally got to the point where I really wanted peace more than anything I wanted peace. And I can tell you, if you want peace, you may have to do a little changing. Awareness. We live half the time like we're unconscious. <laughs> oh God, I just don't know what happened. I don't understand. <laughs> well, stop living in a coma all the time. So often because we live in our own mind and in reasoning. Boy, you got to be so careful about reasoning. God wants to give us discernment. And discernment is something deeper. It's something you feel in your gut. Wisdom is just, I wonder who. That I could figure this out. Don't you love to get with people and just try to figure stuff out? Matthew chapter 16, verse 5. Oh, God, grant me the gift of awareness. <laughs> yeah. 
Anybody with me today? And when the disciples reached the other side of the sea, they found that they'd forgotten to bring any bread. And Jesus said, be careful and on your guard against the leaven, the ferment of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, Jesus was going to take this very natural situation and he was going to teach them a deep spiritual lesson. But they just weren't with it at all. They just didn't get it. I wonder how many times God's trying to teach us some deep, profound spiritual lesson and we're just like, huh? Eh? What? And they reasoned among themselves. <laughs> saying, now is it because we didn't bring any bread? But Jesus, what? <laughs> Aware of this, ask, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? <laughs> oh, you of little faith, how little trust you have in me. Do you not yet discern, perceive, and understand? <laughs> Do you not remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many small hand baskets full we gathered up? They had just witnessed two outrageous miracles. Jesus fed 5,000 with a little fish and a loaf of bread. He fed 4,000 the same way by the miracle of multiplication. Now, they forgot so fast that they went across the lake in a boat and got all upset because they forgot to bring any bread. Come on, what are you upset about today that if you just remembered a few things that God's done for you in the past? And then he went on to teach them a deeper lesson. He was actually talking to them about not listening to the religiosity of the scribes and Pharisees. I got so many scriptures up here, we'd pass out if we stayed this long. <laughs> How often do we miss the miracle of the moment? <laughs> Wonder how many special moments God has arranged in our lives and we just <laughs> don't even know it. Jesus was always aware of the right timing for things. Wow. Boy, can we save ourselves a lot of trouble if we just don't head into things. Oh, bless God, I'm going to tell you what I think. <laughs> you know, there, do th there are things we need to talk about. There's times when I need to discuss something with Dave that I'm not sure what the reaction is going to be. And, or maybe, you know, I already know how he feels about something and he's not far what I'm for. And, you know, I need to try to talk to him again. I don't do that anymore without praying and waiting for the right timing. And Dave is not even hard to get along with. So just imagine if you've got somebody that is hard to get along with how much more you need to wait and think and pray and find the right time. Amen. It is amazing to me sometimes, <laughs> excuse me, but the dumb things that people say. And it's, it's not that what they're saying is wrong, it's just the timing is so bad. <laughs> and you know what? You can do the right thing at the wrong time and it suddenly becomes the wrong thing. Timing. Don't jump all over your husband the minute he walks in the door about not sweeping the grass off the sidewalk when he mowed it last night if you know he's just fought two hours of traffic trying to get home. Wait till he gets over that. Feed him, then talk to him. <laughs> Ezekiel eleven nineteen. 19. And I will give them one heart, a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within them, and I will take the stony, unnaturally hardened heart out of their flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh, sensitive and responsive to the touch of their God. Now, as a born-again believer, God has taken a hard heart 
given you a sensitive heart, but that doesn't mean that you still don't have to develop that and work with God to learn things. We have all the fruit of the Spirit on the inside of us as a seed, but we don't always operate in that fruit because we haven't developed them and worked with God to see them come to fullness in our life. And I was once a very hard-hearted person. You know, when you've been hurt a lot and pushed around a lot, you, you, get, you get hard because you get tired of getting hurt and you think that's the only way to protect yourself. And you know, having a hard heart and being in ministry just doesn't work together very well. And it really doesn't work good for anything. But I became very aware that I really needed to be softened by God. And nothing will soften you like being in the presence of God, recognizing His love and just seeing all the things that God does for you. I mean, that, that can just turn you into a pile of jelly just knowing how much God cares for you. And so I want to encourage you, if you've got some kind of an attitude, bless God, I don't need you. Don't try to tell me what to do. I'm my own person. Nobody's ever going to push me around again. You know what? That's not cute. It's not attractive. It's not what the way God wants us to be. Come on, do I have any people here that were ever like that? Do I dare ask how many are still like that? No, I won't. No. But see, this, this, is, this is good news. I say, I know that lady was kidding. She said, we're not going there. But here's the point. If you don't go there with me today, you'll go there again at some other time. We put the hard things off. Now, you know what? God's trying to talk to some people today about being more aware of what He wants you to do, the timing for things, and, and stop just living off the top of your head, making your own decisions. Zip your lip a little more often and try to hear what God wants. You remember when the woman was taken in prostitution and all the, all the religious people kind of put Jesus on the spot? Well, you know, this is what the law says. Now, what, now what are you going to do? How can you possibly be merciful like you say you are and totally keep the law like you say you do? <laughs> and I love what Jesus did. He didn't just immediately give them an answer. The Bible says that he bent down and wrote on the ground with his finger. What in the world was he doing? Doodling? I don't think so. <laughs> this is my own opinion. But I believe that he was listening for the right, exact right way to handle that situation. He didn't just jump off on his own, and boy, did he have the right answer. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let the one among you without sin throw the first stone. See, the only thing that ever gives us a right to judge anybody else is if we are perfect and sinless and never make mistakes. So I think we'd all have to walk away too. You know, I don't have time to do it, but I've got so many scriptures up here where Jesus noticed. He stopped. He was aware. Over and over and over. Jesus was walking along, and he noticed a man blind from birth. Jesus was walking along, and he noticed the crippled man. Jesus was headed somewhere, and a woman came up to him and touched him who'd had an issue of blood for 18 years. And he stopped, and he took time for her. He was going somewhere, and the centurion came to him saying, would you heal my servant? He said, I'll go and do it. He said, you didn't even have to do that. You speak the word, and my servant boy will be healed. You know, we're all going somewhere. Jesus was always going somewhere. I'm always going somewhere. You're always going somewhere. But I think we're running over a whole lot of hurting people. And we're totally missing the whole ministry that God has for us. Can I tell you something that you may think sounds a little ridiculous? But I happen to believe this, you know. Yes, this is my ministry. But I have a ministry that's even more important. And you know what that is? That's my private, everyday life ministry yeah, 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 yeah. 
And it's more important how I treat people in my daily, regular, normal, Monday through Friday life than it is what kind of show I put on when I'm up here. And I am acutely aware that if I don't stop for hurting people and I'm not sensitive to the needs that people have, I'm not going to have an anointing when I get up here. If you want to increase the power on your life, you start loving people more. You be more aware. You take the time to stop for people, even when you think you're in a hurry and you're busy going somewhere. You've got a ministry. You don't need to ask God anymore what you're supposed to do with your life. Today, I'm calling everybody into full-time ministry. I'm issuing the call. Acts 10, 38. See how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good. That was his ministry. Got up every day and went about. I've decided that I can went about. I'm able to do that. The Bible says, be more concerned for the interests of others than you are for the interests of yourself. Here's why. If you deposit yourself with God every day and then you get up and you went about. Amen. Come on, a few of you are following me. <laughs> you make your deposit every morning. Just imagine yourself, you're driving through the drive through at heaven. Here I am, Lord. Plunk, I deposit myself with you. Now grant me the gift of awareness today so as I went about in society, to school, to work, in the neighborhood, to the grocery store, whatever I do. Let me tell you something. God wants to use you. There are people around you all over the place that are contemplating suicide. They hate themselves. Nobody has ever said anything good to them. They're beat up and beat down. They're bleeding internally. And you have, you have the power and the ability to do something about it. Well, Joyce, I have problems. <laughs> You're probably going to keep them too. Want me to tell you how to get rid of your problems? Drive through, deposit yourself with God. <laughs> God, I am your problem. If you cannot change me, I sure cannot. I can't fix my problems. I can't make people treat me right. But you can, God, all things are possible with you. I'm giving myself and my whole mess to you. Come on, did you hear me? I'm giving myself and my whole mess to you. Now, here I am, God. What can I do for you? Stop giving God a list of 20 things every day he has to give you to keep you saved. Don't worry, my time's almost over. You know, <laughs> you know the story about the Good Samaritan? Well, Lord, who's my neighbor? <laughs> In Luke 10, he said, well, let's just suppose there was a man who was walking along and he got beat up. Somebody just jumped on him and beat him up and stole all of his goods and left him on the side of the road dying and bleeding. And a priest came by. <laughs> Passed over on the other side of the street. Didn't have any time. He was going somewhere. He was a religious man on his way to church, I think. <laughs> and then a Levite came by. They were pretty up there too, you know. He also did the same thing. He didn't stop. But then a Samaritan came by who supposedly was not even a godly person. And he was on his way somewhere too. 
We're all on our way somewhere. You know, the most important thing is the fruit that's coming off of our lives. Was the priest godly? He didn't act like it. <laughs> Was the Levite godly? Didn't act like it. But the Samaritan, whom we would have assumed, <laughs> would have had nothing going on, he stopped. And he didn't only stop. He plunked down money. Now, you know, we get real unwilling to help if it's going to cost money. And then not only that, I find very interesting, he didn't even put a limit on what he would spend. He said, and whatever you have to spend taking care of him, when I come back, I'll pay you. Well, I give my tithe. <laughs> well, I gave at the office, I gave last week. I'm talking about a lifestyle, not a law that we follow. Okay, look, I got, I got a good statement. This is fresh, never said this before. It's just bubbling up now. If you want a new life, you've got to have a new lifestyle. <laughs> you know, there's people all around you that are hurting and bleeding and, you know, I looked up some statistics, and in 2010, which has been four years ago, that was the newest statistic I could find, one million people committed suicide, and another million attempted suicide. There are all kinds of people around you every day that feel invisible. They feel that nobody cares about them, they're alone. They're frightened, they're brokenhearted, they're bruised, and they're wounded, and we carry around the hope of the world in us. How about being more aware? You say to somebody, oh, how are you today? Okay. They ain't okay. Not if they said that, they're not okay. <laughs> You doing okay? Well, let me just tell you, God loves you. He's got a good plan for your life. Well, I might feel kind of funny saying that. <laughs> Deposit yourself with God and don't worry so much about how you feel about everything and just let God use you. Amen. Amen. We don't have to be obnoxious and try to cram the gospel on everybody's throat, but we can pass out a little hope. Now, I just want to say a word, especially to our TV audience, although it certainly could apply to people in here, too. You know, we frequently have people, I mean, not all the time, but it's happened a good number of times, tell us, I was flipping through the channels contemplating suicide, and I accidentally <laughs> turned on your program, and God spoke through you, and I made another decision and now I'm serving God. I remember a woman who said that she was sitting on the, the couch, she had a gun in her hand, she tried to, she was gonna sh shoot herself up under here, so she was trying to prop it here. The remote was on her, in her way, so she went like that and it turned my program on. <laughs> and she said, the thing that you said at the moment that I turned it on was God loves you and he's got a good plan for your life. <laughs> that girl not only didn't kill herself, she ended up becoming a worship leader. God don't care about you. He knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. And God does love you, and he does have a good plan for your life. And if you're contemplating killing yourself, don't, because you are valuable, and we need you. Amen?
You know, many places in the Bible we're told to remember what God has done for us. So we need to pray, I believe, that God would grant us the gift of awareness. I pray for that fairly regularly. And what the reason why I do that is because I want to be aware of what God's doing for me, and I want to be aware of what I can be doing for other people. Unfortunately, in a lot of our communities around here in South Africa and this region in KwaZulu-Natal, um, the abuse, the sexual abuse, uh, the physical abuse of as well, uh, is quite horrendous. Even in the area, we were, we were scared for the kids. It's heartbreaking when they're missing. I'm not going to let that happen. That's why I'm fighting for this area. Some of the children in this area mm -hmm. have disappeared? Yes. They did. What we do you... never found them. Before we open up this crutch, they are safe, healthy, good. They are good. So these early childhood development centers are not uh, little nice to haves or nursery places where they keep kids, you know, have fun and play games. They do all of those things, but this is actually investing in long term benefit. This really is something that we can install into a community that opens up the door of the community for us to share the gospel and really stands as a witness, as a shining light into the community about the love of Christ. And we have such great opportunities through our classrooms of hope to help little guys like this who are going to make a big impact on the world one day. With your missions gift right now, you can provide safe, classroom learning opportunities for young children. You and your special gift today will change lives. Zelfbewust te zijn heeft alles te maken met vertrouwen op God. Dit is precies waar het over gaat in het dagboek van Joyce. Je bent wonderlijk gemaakt. Vertrouw op God en weet dat je waardevol bent voor Hem. Hij geeft je de kracht om nieuwe dingen te doen en hiervoor je gaven in te zetten. God heeft je wonderlijk gemaakt om moedig en vrij jezelf te zijn. Met dit dagboek voor vrouwen ontdek je elke dag iets meer hoe kostbaar je bent voor God. Bestel je bent wonderlijk gemaakt door te bellen met 026 2022 100. Of online via joyce-meyer.nl slash wonderlijk.